call me. Tomorrow, I'm brewing a Goza, and I'd like to get the hazy double IPA we made a couple weeks ago into a keg. That means I need to add the last of the dry hops today. This beer started with a recipe from Craft Beer and Brewing Magazine, and once the yeast kicked into gear, I dry hopped it with 1.75 ounces of citra. With about 24 hours left, I'm ready to cold crash and add the final three ounces of citra hops. Things are warming up and I'll soon be reaching for summer styles. To me, one of the best summer beers is a German Goza. As I understand it, Goza is one of two beer styles to withstand the test of time in that area. They're typically light in color, contain a moderate amount of alcohol, and have a slightly salty, tart, lemony flavor. Traditionally, these beers were spontaneously fermented in warm conditions and served up extremely fresh. These days, they're simply fermented with ale yeast and lactobacillus. I'm going with the quick sour method, and I'll be using some coriander seed left over from the beer to guard we made in the last episode. Now, let's make some beer. I'm gonna pour some ambience and put it in this track. <laughs> While my strike water heats up, I'm adjusting the water profile for this beer using gypsum, calcium chloride, and a little lactic acid. For a beer like this, I think it's important to keep the water profile pretty simple. The grain bill for this beer is also going to be pretty simple. I'm using 50% wheat malt, 42% pilsner, and 8% rice hulls. For the mash schedule, I'm going with a single infusion at 148 degrees Fahrenheit or 64 and a half degrees Celsius, so I have this Anvil Foundry brew system set to 154 for mashing. Let's get this thing going. I'll keep mashing this in until everything is nice and saturated. Once we're mashed in, I'll bump the kettle down a couple degrees to our target temperature of 148 degrees Fahrenheit and set a timer for one hour. While the mash moves along, let's get that hazy double IPA into a keg. This is my first time using this four gallon bucket fermenter from Anvil and everything went super smoothly. Dry hopping with this thing is a breeze and when the airlock is bubbling, this thing lets out some pretty beefy sounds. There's a rotating dip tube in there, so let's see how it drains. The first thing I need to do is flush the keg with CO2 to remove some of the oxygen that could ruin the beer. Now I can send the beer from the bucket to the keg. Not bad. The last thing I need to do is pop the top on and flush the headspace with CO2 to try to eliminate any remaining oxygen. Now I'll throw this thing inside and we can get back to brewing. Our Goza has been mashing for about 40 minutes and I want to recirculate the wort and try to clear this thing up. 20 minutes to go. All right, that's enough of that. Time to yank these grains and get our boil started. 
I'm going no sparge today, so now that the basket is up and out of the work, let's crank this thing to full blast. For most beer styles, I'd be kicking off a 60 minute boil at minimum. But with quick sours, this is where things take a turn. After mashing comes a step called acidification. I'll start the process with a five minute boil to sanitize the wort of any bacteria or yeast that might have been on the equipment, in the grains, or for whatever reason, made it into the kettle. That's five minutes and we're ready to chill. While we make our way down to 90 degrees Fahrenheit or 32 degrees Celsius, I'm slowly adding lactic acid until the wort pH is four and a half. To keep everything at 90 degrees during acidification, I'm planning on sealing it up in the foundry and keeping it at low power until it's ready. That means I need to somehow plug this recirculation hole in the lid. Luckily, the grommets used in bucket fermenter lids fit like a glove, and that means I'll be able to just pop an airlock on there. Now, all I need to do is add my lacto and wait until the pH drops down to about three and a half. All right, it's been a couple days and I think we're ready to rock. My pH meter wasn't working properly, so I checked the pH with some test strips. Always good to have a backup. Anytime I do this, I always make sure to taste it as well, just to make sure that it has that tart bite I'm looking for. And that's really the end of the quick sour process. From here on out, this is going to feel pretty normal, starting with a 60 minute boil. While we make our way up to a boil, I need to make some changes to my wort chiller. If you missed the last episode, I tried out the stainless chiller that comes with the Anvil Foundry and ran into some challenges. I'm hoping to reduce the pressure that builds up in the tubing and maybe stretch it out a bit so it reaches the bottom of the foundry. Let's give it a shot. Okay, here's my new and improved chiller. Stoked to give it a shot. We've got 15 minutes left in the boil and it's time for some hops. Here's 14 grams of Hollertau. I also need to get ready for the next addition by grinding up some coriander seed. Okay, here's seven grams of freshly ground coriander and I'm also adding seven grams of pink Himalayan salt. 10 minutes left in the boil. And just like that, we're ready to chill. Once we're cooled down and in the carboy, I'll pitch the yeast. I'm going with German ale, Kolsch yeast from White Labs in a fermentation temperature of 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 degrees Celsius. Well, the updates to the chiller worked out pretty well. It's nice to be able to hook up a hose to both sides and run the output out to the backyard. The beer looks and smells great. Should be ready just in time for summer. More to come. If you like this video, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing so you don't miss the next one. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'll see you again soon.